This is my new kitten. His name is Smokey. Say hi, Smokey. Hello. <laughs> okay, you can go. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to address one of the most asked questions. I get uh, DMs about it all the time. People comment it, asking questions. And that is if aerospace engineering is difficult. Now, this is not a yes, a simple yes or no question. Um, it is definitely more complicated to answer that question just because I compare it to when people ask you, is it spicy? Is this food spicy? You know, it just depends. It depends on your tolerance. It depends on if you used, if you like spicy food, uh, my tolerance can be higher than yours or it could be lower. It just depends. There's really no way to answer that question except for them to try the food and then decide for themselves. Uh, I think it's very hard for me to answer that question uh, just because I just don't really know a lot about the person that's asking the question. I feel like if I knew the person, I would be able to answer it. Now, um, I did want to kind of not just leave it as a broad answer, but go into details on what my experience, experience was like and what I think personally. Uh, now, although I did find it really difficult, it was extremely challenging. Aerospace engineering is one of the most difficult engineering majors to pursue, uh, close to electrical engineering and computer science. However, I do not believe it's impossible. It was extremely difficult, I had to put a lot of effort into it, but I mean, I did it, right? I even went for a master's in aerospace engineering just because I loved it so much. So it just depends on what you want from aerospace engineering. I understand a lot of us go to school to get a job and make money, but that shouldn't really be your main purpose. Uh, it shouldn't be just because you hear that engineers make a lot of money because sometimes I get a lot of questions too about oh should I do mechanical engineering or should I pursue aerospace engineering I don't know that's totally up to you uh, people say oh I heard aerospace engineering it's hard to find a job it's very competitive uh, there aren't that many open positions and maybe in 2002, 2003 it was, or 2008 when the market crash happened, yeah, that's true. But now, now that the space industry is expanding, there's a lot more private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, uh, you definitely have more opportunity than someone 20 years ago did, for sure, certainly. But don't just go into it thinking that, oh, I'm gonna make money, so I gotta go there. Because you would be definitely mes miserable. There's no way you're gonna enjoy it. If you do something for the money, you don't love it, you don't do it just because you're ambitious and you love what you do, of course, the money's not gonna matter. Like, in the beginning, it's very exciting. Oh my God, I make so much money, and that's how it was for me. It was like, oh yeah, now I like, make a really, really good amount of money for my age, but if, like, if it wasn't for me being, um, ambitious about the field I wouldn't really enjoy it at all with that being said although my experience in college was extremely challenging and although I was a very very um, how do I say this I was a really good student like all my life had straight A's uh, I was I loved being a student I loved going to school I was that specific very special person that really loved going to school when everyone else was like oh my god I hate it I was the one who loved math physics, biology, when everyone said they hated math, like I just love the sciences overall, so I knew that I wanted to be in something that was uh, STEM related. I didn't necessarily know that it was going to be astronautics specifically when I was growing up, I thought I was going to be a doctor, but I just quickly in, in high school realized that I was more of a physics person than a biology person, like although I was really good at biology, to me it was just boring, it wasn't really as interesting as physics was. Um, so yeah, when I moved to the States, I decided to be in aerospace engineering. Now, just because, um, okay, now so I met a lot of people throughout my, my uh, college career, right? And initially a lot of uh, people had a really hard time with classes like Calc 2, Calc 3, a lot of people like had to take it three times, they filled it three times, so for me it was not the case. I really, really enjoyed Calc 2 and Calc 3, and I also knew that uh, upperclassmen cl classes would be much more 
complicated, much more uh, advanced, and I knew that was not the hardest class I will ever take. And people will tell you that, like you would take Calc 203, and you'd be like, oh my god, what is this? Like this is this is torture. Just remember that you will need that information you take in this, those classes, and you will apply it to actual uh, uh, actual aerospace problems, issues that you will be taking in other classes, like um, more advanced classes, like aerodynamics or high speed aero or spacecraft design, whatever it is. Um, now, what? No, Smokey. Sorry, my cat is like messing with my job. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop. Go away. Okay. Um, what was I saying? You made me lose my track of thought. Yes, so here are some tips that I would give you. Like if you really sit down with yourself and you think deeply with yourself that aerospace engineering is what you, really, really what you want to do. And also you got to keep in mind, this is one of those things that I hear about a lot is international students asking me about the job prospects for them in the United States. You have to keep in mind that in the space industry and in the majority, like 98%, now I don't know about all companies, right? I don't really know about all of their laws and whatever uh, exceptions they have, but in every single company that I have um, in, not interned at or I have I had an interview with, the first thing they ask you is, are you, no, hey, go away, stop. The first thing they ask you, sorry, the first thing they ask you is, are you a US citizen? Um, due to uh, export laws and intellectual property laws, if you want to work in uh, the aerospace industry, you have to be a US citizen. Even if you look at, for example, like Northrop Grumman, stop! Okay, give me one second. I will keep him outside. I'm trying to film a video, Smokey. A lot of the companies that are space industry, like Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, uh, even SpaceX, since they do work for NASA, you have to be a US citizen. So you have to have been here for a long time or like actually came as an immigrant to the United States and acquire US citizenship. So my specific story is when I moved to the United States, since everyone asked me how I did it. So I came here to stay with my dad who was living here with his uh, US, uh, who, who, with his American wife, right? And they, when I came to the States, I was an immigrant status. I was not an international student. So the purpose of me coming to the States was to eventually get my US citizenship. And I think that's a story for some other video just because the immigration process here is very complicated and I can't possibly cover it in one video. Anyways, I do have US citizenship. When I moved to the States, I did not have US citizenship. I was a green card holder. So um, I had to have my green card for five years before I can be eligible uh, eligible for applying for citizenship, which that was the process that I took. So when I was still in college, I did not have my US citizenship. So when I would go to certain um, uh, like job fairs, like engineering job fairs, I didn't get callbacks just because they knew that I did not have US citizenship. Now some companies, if you have a green card, they might hire you because I had an internship with a company that when I did not have US citizenship, but I was only able to work in specific um, projects or programs and others I couldn't really work. So it was very, very limited. Now, when I graduated with my bachelor's, that year I got my US citizenship because that was the five year mark of me being in the United States the whole time. Um, and I was able right away, as soon as I got my citizenship and I went to an engineering fair, like I started getting all of these requests for interviews. So that's how I realized, oh, that's why I wasn't getting callbacks is because I, I was not a US citizen. Anyways, so I'll just get that out of the way. You need to be a US citizen to work in the space industry. Now, um, in once you're in college, these are the things that kind of helped me, you know, made it a little bit easier for me to get through classes. Uh, one of the main ones is take advantage of uh, office hours. So when professors give you a certain homework, every week they do have an hour or two hours office hours where you get the chance to go to his office or her office and ask questions about the homework or whatever it is that you're working on. And most of the time when you go to office hours, usually either the TA, the teaching assistant, or the professor would sit down with you and try to explain things that you're, you don't understand. So what I used to do is, if we have a certain homework and we have a week uh, when it's supposed to be due, I would 
uh, go to the library and try to solve as many of the problems that I have and kind of uh, mark which areas I'm not really sure how to solve the, the, the problem or like if I have certain questions where the lecture wasn't really clear and so I go through the whole homework almost like I'm gonna finish it and then once uh, office hours come along I go to the professor and be like hey this is what I have so far and these are the holes that I couldn't fill like would you be able to explain more to me like what I should do or like which am I, am I in the right track am I in the right uh, position like how do I get there and most of the time they would not give you the answer they won't be like well the answer to that is this they will just guide you into understanding the process for solving a certain problem and eventually get into the answer yourself and I think that office hours were extremely helpful I didn't need to go to office hours for all classes there were some classes where I was fine I understood the, the book was helpful or I could um, go on YouTube and figure out how to solve it but um, some of the more advanced classes it was more difficult to find information on the internet so I had to kind of talk to the professor and try to get it and like 98% of the time they were extremely helpful and it makes more sense to you once you talk to the professor one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, now most of the office hours a lot of people go to office hours so it gets a little you know tricky trying to get time with the professor but some professors know how to deal with it where they would set everyone down and then kind of go through all the questions one by one. Um, another thing that Arizona State University had was a tutor center and the tutor center was ran by students. So the students were the tutors, like if let's say you were in Calc 1 or Calc 2 and I already took Calc 1, Calc 2 and I'm in Calc 3, then I would be able to help you with your homework in Calc 1, Calc 2. So they were higher students that had certain experience in certain classes and they would have to have uh, gotten in that a certain grade like I think a B plus or an A minus was the, the cutoff uh, for you to become a tutor for that certain class so initially when I was taking like uh, classes in freshman year it was much easier because I would go in and then someone had already taken that class uh, because that specific tutor center was specifically for math and engineering so most of the students that were tutors there already are either in engineering or have taken those classes before they were able to help me a lot of times with questions that I had on MATLAB or uh, whatever other like simple problems with uh, classes that were fresh freshman or sophomore level but I feel like once I got to junior and senior level there was not they weren't as helpful just because the students there didn't are either still like freshmen themselves and sophomores or just don't really know a lot about the specific class that I'm taking which was uh, specifically for astronautics if that makes sense so as you get uh, higher into your coursework it might be more difficult to go to the tutor center so that that's when the office hours become more helpful another uh, I would guess advice I would give you is for the love of God do not wait until the last minute to do your homework uh, a lot a lot of the homework in aerospace engineering whether that would be I don't know aerodynamics would be the lab or just lecture it takes a minimum of 10 to 18 hours to do that specific homework like it, would, it might be just look short where you have three problems but it takes a long a long long time to solve those problems so if you wait until the weekend before it's due you will not do well just because you well one is the office hours has already passed so you won't have the chance to go see the professor and, and ask for help and two you're already panicking and you're like oh my god I have to do this and it's just gonna take so long just don't wait until last minute start doing the homework right after it's assigned uh, so usually a professor would be like hey homework number five is due next week and it's on blackboard today and I usually go there print the homework and start looking at it right away just because I want to make sure that whatever questions I come across I can have enough time to go see the professor or go to the tutor center whatever I need help to get the answers for them and I think you have to build a certain process uh, to make sure that you're getting all the things you need for certain homeworks just because I mean pro like exams are important right uh, you have to study for the exam but in my opinion I felt like the homeworks were more important just because not only are you getting uh, practice but a lot of the homeworks were, were much more difficult than the exam so if you understand a certain homework and you were, went through it and you, you, you were very confident in the answers that you had and you got a good grade or whatever 
there is a very very high high chance when later on in the semester when you're taking a certain exam about a specific topic you will do very well and that was what i went by is homeworks were much more important to me uh, because also they had they, they took a very large uh, percentage of your grade like sometimes 30 35 percent of your grade was from the homework so it was very very important uh, part of my grade and also I put a lot of emphasis on it and even when you're studying for a certain exam you always go back to the homework and actually try to solve it try to again and try to refresh your memory and understand if you know how to solve a certain you know problem so I, I think a lot of these habits you will eventually pick up as you're in you know involved when you start taking classes but i understand in the beginning it was kind of a scary process because you don't you know you just finished high school you don't really understand the extent of the involvement that you have with the professor like when should you ask questions um the answer to that is all the time if you're in a classroom and you have a certain question someone is taught is professor is explaining something and you're like I don't really understand what he's talking about or like there's a point that doesn't make sense always bring it up because that's when I remember the most is when I ask a certain question about something it sticks in my brain and I'm like oh I remember that that was the answer to that question so when you see it again it's more apparent that you know how to, to solve or answer a specific problem so I think the most important thing or the most important advice I can give you is don't be lazy <laughs> don't procrastinate just because i mean i'm not gonna lie and say i didn't procrastinate sometimes i mean sometimes you do you just don't really feel like doing anything but don't make it a habit because you will be very miserable a lot of people uh had to drop out very early on like we started with a my class started with i would say 100 and 200 students in aerospace um and when i graduated astronautics specifically so if you don't know the way it's structured is that asu has aerospace engineering and you have two uh, subdivisions, subsections to it. You have aeronautics, which is about uh, the study of planes, helicopters, so anything that ha that's flying in the air. And you have astronautics, which is all about launch vehicles, satellites, and everything that's in space. So I was the astronautics division. But in the beginning, in freshman year and a half of sophomore year, you're technically taking the same classes. It's not until sophomore year when you start separating and taking separate classes. So in the beginning for aerospace class for me, it started as I would say like 100 and 200 people. And then when I graduated with in astronautics, my class was like 15. So a lot of people dropped off, switched to mechanical engineering or like screw engineering, I'm gonna go do business, <laughs> whatever it is. And I think a lot of that is um, due to like people's own psyche like they you know say oh I can't do it it's too difficult or is because they don't have a good system that works for them so the most important thing for me was to develop a very effective and efficient system for doing homework studying and making sure that I'm understanding what the hell is going on in a certain class uh, because it's very easy for things to just fly over your head and you're just like where a second what, what are you talking about? Uh, especially if you miss a lot of classes. Uh, like in my class, we make we made a joke about if you miss one lecture, it's almost like you missed the whole semester. Because once you come back, you're like, what what the hell? Like this is I've never seen this before. So if you can make sure you don't miss classes, make sure you're present in lectures, make sure you read the textbook or whatever chapter you're gonna work on for, for that specific class. That way you don't come into a class completely clueless. I feel like it really helped me when. I uh, reviewed the, either the PowerPoint or the book before a certain class because then I kind of have you know an idea about what I'm, what to expect and I can ask I can ask questions very easily since I've read the material and I know what he's talking about what professor he or she are talking about so yeah I mean the answer the simple answer to is aerospace engineering difficult is it uh, challenging the answer is yes right. Is it impossible? No, it's not. You just have to put the effort and you will saw, you know, the results. Uh, it will be very draining, emotionally draining, where you have so much to do, not enough time. You, my God, like your labs are gonna suck. Uh, there were times when I have to do a certain lab and then I go into the lab and run the analysis on the wind tunnel and then 
I would like try to process the information and like write the report, the 50 page report. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing this right. I got my code, my lab, my, my lab code perfectly laid out. And then I go see the TA and I'm like, hey, this is my plot. This is what it looks like. Does it look right? And he's like, nope, you gotta start over. And I only have a couple days left because I've been working on this stupid report for two weeks. And now they're telling me that it's wrong. Oh my gosh, thinking about it, it's stressing me out. <laughs> oh, oh my God, it's PTSD right here. Anyways, I, I don't mean to scare you. Like once you're on the other side of it, it's all you think of, it's all worth it. Like there are times when I actually reminisce on those experiences and I feel like that was the best time for me to learn just because there's so much to learn, so much information. So much, you know, sparkles in your eyes and you're like very ambitious and you want to do this and you're like, yay, information, yay, airspace, yes, space, we love it. But uh, it is definitely very difficult and as I said, if you love what you do, you will be okay, right? Um, just make sure that your, your base and mathematics, mathematics your base in math is very solid. That's the one thing, like if you're still in high school, I would say it's very, very important that you focus on your math skills because you will be using them a lot. Literally math is the language of engineering, not English, it's math. Math is what you use in every single class that you ever take. Well, maybe not the, the other classes, like I don't know, the humanities classes. I'm just saying aerospace related classes. You will be using math in every single one of them. So make sure you sharpen your tools, make sure you, you, uh, you know, Calc 1, 2, and 3. I don't know how an American high school math program works, but make sure that your math, your base is, is, is covered because after that, I think you will be okay. I think that was all. That was all that I had to share with you guys today. I really, I know it's a long answer to a you know, short, simple question, but I can never say yes or no. Just I don't really know how to answer it without really giving you the long version of it. So I hope it was helpful to you. I hope I answered some or most of the questions that you guys had. And let me know down below what you guys think or what else or what other questions you have that you think... My cat is meowing at the door, sorry. <laughs> what other questions you uh, would want me to answer you think would be helpful in kind of getting you closer to understanding what to expect in college or what to expect as an actual professional. I would love to answer those questions. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe and like this video so that I know you really enjoyed it. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.